I don't know what's going on here. Welcome, Norman Kinsey, NLK3 for short. Um, want to wish you all an amazing day and thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm going to make this short, simple, and to the point. Um, I want to talk about social media algorithms and more importantly, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself getting lost in your activity feed and scrolling and maybe losing time out of your day? And the answer to that question is yes, you've lost some time out of your day because you found yourself scrolling and you're looking at this and that and puppies and cats and kittens and cars and yada, 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 yada. Hot girls, hot guys, workout videos, and it goes on and on. I watched a documentary yesterday and um, I'll find the documentary. It's called Our Social Dilemma. It's on Netflix and it talked about a lot of various things on social media. The one thing I want to touch on is algorithms. And I want to touch on the fact that if you find yourself on social media and you are uncontrollably scrolling and you find yourself taking more time maybe each day or each week or each month on social media scrolling through your activity feed, it's in the best interest of the social media platforms because this is in their business model to put emphasis on keeping you on their platform the longest. If you're on the platform the longest, then they can basically be able to do more with monetizing. Now, how does social media get paid, right? You're signing up for social media, it's free. How do they get paid? How does that work? Social media gets paid by advertisers. So if I wanted to advertise on the platform as Liftoff Agent, my tech company, I'm a CEO and co-founder there supporting real estate professionals with their online marketing approach. And I wanted to say, for instance, run an ad. Right, The ad's all about, hey, target your ideal client area that you serve so you can be an expert as a real estate professional. Now, if I spend money to Facebook, we'll just use that as an example. Then spend money on Facebook to be able to help get that ad out there. It's in their best interest to have you on their platform for as long as possible. So hence, you scroll into your activity feed and looking at a bunch of stuff and catching yourself getting stuck in that activity feed. I've done it, I'm sure you've done it, we've all done it, right? And then I have to check myself like, Norm, what am I doing? Stop, stop scrolling, get back to work. And I'll do that even when I'm looking for something. I'm gonna message someone back on Instagram and I find myself scrolling through the activity feed. So what does this all mean, right? What's the bigger picture here? What this means is, is that if the social media companies out there is in their best interest to keep you on the platform for as long as possible. That means they're collecting data, not your name and phone number and address, but they're collecting data, right? Search history, browsing history. If you go to your um, your your feed, as, as far as like you hit the little search icon and or you're on YouTube and you see a video recommended right after a video that you just watched, they're trying to pre-predict what you want to see. So, right, no big deal, right? They wanna show you what you wanna see. What's the big deal in that? The big deal in that is, is that they want to keep those endorphins flowing because when you get a like or you get a comment or you see something that gives endorphins, just like maybe when you smoke a cigarette, you get endorphins released, drink alcohol, smoke weed, whatever, um, or you jump out on a plane, you get a high, you have a fast car, you drive fast, you get those endorphins, you're getting the same type of endorsement endorphins on a smaller level that in turn basically gets you to come back. It's an easy way for you to pick up your phone and to scroll through, get some endorphins released and go on with your day. So if they can pre-predict what you wanna see and you get caught up in the activity feed or get caught up and go down that rabbit hole of all of the freaking things that they're recommending that you see, then they have you. They have you because guess what? If you think about social media on a bigger level, social media doesn't have a product, they don't have a service, and you don't pay to be on the platform. So then how do they make money? By monetizing. Who are they making money from? Liftoff or other companies that advertise on the platform. What's their product? You. You are the product that puts emphasis on being able to sell ads which you'll consume, which you'll buy from, and they will make money, and you will basically get your product, and you will be stuck in that social media cycle. Now, this is where it gets very, very hairy, and I'm gonna end here in a minute. If we're not supporting our children, we're not there for our children, and we are so busy in our own lives, and we're so busy with this, 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 and that, and whatever the case may be, who's influencing our children? Is it social media because they have a phone and they're on social media and the algorithms pre-predicting what they wanna see? How is that helping your daughter? How is it helping your son? 
How is it helping your brother, your uncle, your niece, your nephew, anyone that you have relatives or even friends? How is it helping them, right? What is that doing to support them? I'll be honest. Before being married, I had a bunch of females on my activity feed. And then I still do have some females on my activity feed for recommendation on Instagram. And it's something that I talked to Melissa about and she called me out about. I said, you know what? If I look at any type of women at all on there at all, even from the past, because there's a lot more now, it's a lot less, they'll still recommend it to me because they want me to go down and watch that stuff and look at that stuff. What would that do to someone that doesn't have self-esteem or doesn't have the willpower to say enough is enough and not want to watch that? You have to have the tools to have the willpower, to have the confidence, to not get caught up in activity feeds, to go down a rabbit hole. What does that do to your children? What does that do to your friends? What does that do to your nephew? What does that do to the people that are the next generation that we have coming here for 2021 and beyond? And now with COVID and everyone being at home and everyone being on their computers, something to take in consideration. We gotta start the conversation I'm looking out for my children, I'm looking out for my nieces and my nephew, and I'm looking out for you and your children and your nieces and your nephew and putting something in perspective. My mother-in-law said, Norm, you'd be great at motivational speaking going to schools. One of my goals, I gotta keep on growing lift off first, then I can get to that point. Thanks so much for your time, really do appreciate it. Hope you found this was helpful. Um, share it, share the message, comment below. How does social media affect you? Do you get lost in the, in the algorithm? Do you look at the recommendation? How many hours do you spend on it? Like the video, it'll help the algorithm to get this video out to more. That's how the algorithms work. You have to comment, you have to like to get the video out to more people. Same thing with YouTube. You have to like this video, you have to comment below, you have to share the video, and then the algorithms will catch win, and guess what? Then you'll be able to see what you're gonna see. If you look at everything that's going on right now on social media, it's all trends. What I'm talking about isn't a trending topic because it goes against the grain. Make it a great day, appreciate you.